the watershed algorithm is a well-known algorithm for image segmentation that uses seeds or markers as bases to start the, um, the process of region growing. We are going to use the implementation found at scikit image package. Let us define an image with three objects containing noise. Because we have in this case a simple image with constant values, we will use the distance transform to obtain the valleys and peaks for the watershed algorithm. The idea of the distance transform is that it computes the distance between the background and the object pixels. So maximum values are going to be the center of mass of objects. As we can see here, we have those three um, objects in this case. I included um, a little bit of noise in every one of those objects in order to make the problem a little bit more difficult. When we compute the distance transform, what we have is this output. Note that it is it, it has a higher value the more this pixel is distant from the background. So in this case, because we have a larger object, we have a peak here that um, is that has a larger value than the other objects. However, this is the idea that um, that we want. We want an image that has valleys and peaks that can be used efficiently using the watershed algorithm. So we first compute the distance transform. Let me do it again here. And then we um, are going to use that distance transform to also obtain the seeds for our, our segmentation. This is common in, in the case of especially binary images but also simple images. The idea is to get local maxima of the pixels and then use the disjunct components are going uh, as, as seeds for the for the segmentation remember that the watershed segmentation uses seeds that correspond to colored water those those colored water is um, represent basically different regions the color are actually labels so this function here peak local max will try to find or compute local maxima for from the distance transform. I'm going to use the distance transform as input and the labels are going to be taken from the test image. This footprint defines the size of the region that I'm going to look for. If I define it to be a small region I'm going to have a large local uh, area of local maxima so I define it to be 9 by 9. Afterwards, I'm going to label each connected component in, into um, a different label. There is a function to do that at, in the morphology package. So let us see below here those, um, those values. So we, in here we have the image, the distance transform of the image, the local maxima found, Note that the local maxima is not well behaved, but um, because it was computed using the um, both the image and the distance transform from the distance transform, so it follows the noise patterns in the image, and then uh, by using the morphology label, we will assign a single label to all those all those pixels here in this um, in this part all those here in, in here so as long as we have um, we assume that we have uh, sufficient pixels inside each object and that they are not connected we are going to, do, to be able to define to well define the seeds if there is some um, for example we, we believe there is some chance of having connected pixels here that uh, should not be there we could use for example um, morphological operation such as the erosion in order to um, cope with that then we finally define the watershed segmentation 
by using the inverse of the distance transform, the seeds that we just computed, and using as mask the image itself. Note that we use the inverse of the distance transform because we are going to uh, remember that we're going to fill the valleys of the image. And in here, the objects are hills or peaks, not valleys. So by inverting it, we make this a valley, this a valley, this a valley, and the background a hill. Showing everything, so just what we did, the original image, distance transform, the local maxima, the labeled local maxima, which will be used as seeds, and finally the resulting, um, the resulting segmentation. Note that it was not perfect, but good enough, consider that it is an automatic method. Let us now use a more complex image. In here, we are going to use a gradient instead of the distance transform. So usually a rule of thumb is to use the distance transform to simple objects and binary images and the gradient for more complex images. Uh, because um, um, I want to show another method for, seed, for defining seeds, I'm going to show you an example of randomly drawing pixels as seeds. So these um, seeds are random pixels. In here I've defined 20 seeds. Um, I will just, this, this is the matrix that uh, to store the seeds. Then I'm going to draw and uh, in this case 20 uh, indices that mean coordinates x and y at random the labels um, are then defined as the actual values of the image so the gray levels so instead of um, finding the local maxima as I did before I just randomly choose them and get the labels as the actual gray level values. Then because every one of those 20 pixels are actually just a single pixel, they're very small, uh, the seed is, uh, is a small seed region, I decided to perform a dilation of the seed so that we have a larger region to start with. I mentioned that I'm going to use a gradient and because we just uh, seen morphology in the previous lecture, I'm going to use the morphological gradient, which is basically dilation minus the erosion of the image. Let me show you first the gradient of the image, the image overlaid with the seeds. Note that similar um, regions with similar uh, gray level values have similar labels as well. And then we perform the watershed transformation by using the image, the gradient of the image and the random seeds. And this is the result. So using this image and those seeds, these are the, the regions that were segmented. I also showed in a different way here, visualize it in a different way by overlaying the regions in a colored version with the image to show you that the, uh, those regions make sense in general. As long as we define well the, the seeds and the markers for segmentation, the watershed algorithm is, uh, can um, result in a fairly good uh, segmentation considering, considering its simplicity.